Hi guys, so today's video we're going to look at the Rudimental Codex from Percussion Creative. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you're probably in the majority. It's actually like the Percussive Arts Society, but for German-speaking countries. So it predominantly functions in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. The president of it is Klaus Hessler, who, if you haven't heard of him, he's a big proponent of open-handed drumming. He writes for Modern Drummer Magazine, and uh, he's got a bunch of books and DVDs um, on open-handed drumming, on rudiments. So he's a session guy. He's pretty cool. He's actually really nice and emailed me personally. And so even though he's the president of this big organization and um, he's a busy guy, he answers his email, which is pretty awesome. So we're going to look at the difference basically between the Percussive Arts Society, 40 rudiments, and the Rudimental Codex, 42 rudiments. Similar number, uh, not the same rudiments. So this is what the Rudimental Codex sheet looks like. I apologize for filming my computer screen again. My computer is weird and glitchy and this is the best I can do. But this is the Codex. You can see it's sponsored by Evans and Promark, and it's, you know, the official sheet from Percussion Creative, which creative is spelled without an E, because Europe, I guess. And it's got 42 rudiments, and so in some ways it looks a lot like the American rudiment sheet. You can even see some familiar names, like the very first rudiment is a single stroke roll. Um, you've got double paradiddles. You've got buzz rolls. Um, you got flams, right? It's, it's very similar. However, it is not 100% the same. You'll also notice on here, we've got reversed double drag taps. We've got charge strokes, three varieties of charge stroke. Um, there's also what's called the final of seven and a reverse final of seven, things you would never see on an American rudiment sheet. So um, the differences are there for a reason, and that reason basically is that American rudiments are... Uh, being taught in Europe as sort of the only rudiments or the most official rudiments. And so Percussion Creative decided that there are tons of rudiments in Europe that predate any American rudimental drumming and they're important and they're not getting taught. So they came up with this sheet that kind of uses some of the stuff that Americans use and some of the stuff that sort of Americans have forgotten or kind of never really used at all. This is an attempt to sort of rectify the two traditions. So in my normal obsessive rudimental study, I put all the rudiments from both sheets, the PAS sheet and the codex, into a spreadsheet. It turns out there are uh, 27 rudiments that overlap between the two sheets. So more than half of each sheet is on the other sheet, right? They, they're not that different. But there are 15 rudiments on the codex that are not on the PAS sheet, which means they're going to be slightly or very unfamiliar to Americans, depending on which one it is. And there are 13 rudiments on the PAS sheet, which Europeans don't think are that interesting, necessary, or important, I guess, compared to their uh, old school tradition. So that means that there's a total between the two sheets of 55 rudiments, which is really, it's not that many. I mean, if we're used to having 40, there's, so there's basically only 15 more for Americans to know uh, that have, you know, basically not been taught recently. However, of those, you know, 15 that are unique to the Codex, there's a bunch that either used to be taught in American tradition or are very similar to rudiments that we understand. And so they're really not that weird. They're just more European-centric. Now, one interesting thing to note about the differences between the two sheets is that almost all the rudiments that are unique to the Percussive Arts Society sheet were invented or at least popularized in the 20th century. Um, like the 17 stroke roll, for example, is on the PAS sheet, it's not on the codex sheet. Uh, and to my knowledge, the first person to really write anything out with a specific 17 stroke roll was Charles Wilcoxon in 1941. So it really wasn't a traditional American rudiment. Or for one more example, like the, um, the triple stroke roll is not on the codex. It really doesn't show up anywhere in American tradition until 1984 with the PAS sheet. It seems to be an invention, let's say, of the Percussive Arts Society. Even though some people call it a French roll, which is European, I've really never seen it in a French publication. So um, there are a few things on the PAS sheet that are just sort of idiosyncratic to 20th century and 21st century American playing that, that really have no European background that I've ever seen. Hence why I think the Codex exists. They're trying to sort of rectify 
this weird American skew that rudimental playing has worldwide with the more traditional European one. Okay, so we're going to actually play some of these rudiments so you can hear the difference instead of just me talk about it. So one thing the Codex has is, of course, like 13 rudiments that the PAS sheet does not have at all. And some of those rudiments are pretty weird to American uh, ears. So one of them is called the Sevener Einstrike, or the Final of Seven. And it's basically, it's a five-stroke roll with these extra notes around it. And it goes like this. So it's a group of five notes, but two of them are doubled, so that makes it a group of seven notes. It only really makes sense in the context of basil drumming, because they phrase things in five tuplets a lot. Whereas American drumming, at least uh, the way that it's played now, a, a, a five tuplet is strange. They do it in DCI sometimes, but it really doesn't make its way into a lot of sort of groove-based playing. We did have a thing like this in the early 1800s. It was called the seven and a two and it was a seven stroke with two extra strokes kind of tacked on to the end. Which is weird by today's standards. And it's also not the same as a final of seven. They're just, they're sort of in that ballpark of like a roll with strokes around it. Okay, aside from rudiments that we don't have at all, the sheet also reinterprets some rudiments that we do have and have always sort of had, but we just don't play them the same way as we used to. The single drag, the codex asserts that we've flipped it around backwards. Their single drag is the tap comes first. Instead of, our, our version is typically a drag and a tap. Their version is a tap and then a drag. However, um, there's, as we all know, different ways you can interpret the drag. It can be really closed or it can be really open. And for the same notation at the same speed, it just depends on the player. Well, they give a little bit of an interpretation guide where they suggest that it should actually be played like a triplet rather than like an orchestral drag, which conflicts with the way a lot of people probably play this typically in America. One other thing that the sheet has is actually three different types of charge strokes. I've gone over charge strokes in some of my other videos, um, but the codex asserts that they are so important that we need to learn uh, both the Swiss version, the French version, and the flammed version. So a charge stroke, to refresh anyone's memory who doesn't uh, have this on call, is it's like a flam, but it's very wide open. So here's a normal flam, and here's a charge stroke. It's, it's super wide. It's actually two different hits instead of one hit slightly off. So of course, the Swiss version is written as like two adjacent 32nd notes. The French version is written as a flam, but the first note is actually louder. And they're still not exactly at American flam squish levels. Um, but there's also the flammed charge stroke, where you get an actual flam and then another charge stroke note together. Um, so that is something that you'll never see in American publications from any century or decade, but it's important to European drumming and enough that they have three of them. So what on earth is this codex really for to you? Like, why would you ever look at it? Well, to me it's interesting because I am just generally interested or obsessed maybe with uh, old school and historical and, um, and European rudimental traditions. However, like, it's interesting just in a general sense to note that the American PAS sheet, which most people take as like the gospel, is not always 100% correct, nor is it the only rudiments that exist. If you just sort of know that about it, you're already ahead of a lot of people. So of course it's good. We're not saying that it's not good. Um, in my one email exchange with uh, Klaus Hessler, he said that he's not really trying to discredit the PAS sheet. That's not their goal. But he's trying to give an alternative to it and there are a few things which are sort of subtly corrections, um, nudging American drumming back to the roots, uh, like the interpretation of that drag tap um, being sort of not left open to the player, but assertively and actively pushed in the direction of triplets rather than sort of closed orchestral drags. It's mostly for European drummers, right? So if you're sitting here in America, uh, it, it's not that useful to you, I guess, in a super practical sense. However, um, I think it is a valid thing. I don't think it's, you know, blasphemy to try to pull back to the roots. And I think that if you're interested in rudiments at all, 
um, it would be good to actually run over this codex and see what the sort of originators of rudiments, the Europeans, uh, think that rudiments should be in the 21st century. Um, this is a brand new thing. I think it came out in 2018. So we're not just throwing it back uh, by looking up old rudiments for the sake of fun, which is what I mostly do, but we're actually trying to push forward with this sheet and um, show what rudiments can be based on the traditions and filtered through sort of the modern lens. So if you've got questions on rudiments at all in general, you can ask me. Um, if you have questions on anything drum related, you know, leave me a comment or whatever. Uh, but I'd like to hear what you guys think of the codex and the, the concept of American versus European rudiments. And uh, hopefully this was at least somewhat interesting and informative. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.